Welcome to Audiology Education Using Smart VS by Rafael Delgado from Intelligent Hearing Systems and Dr. David Brown from Pacific University. We have been working on using simulators as training and teaching tools for many years. Smart VS expands the capabilities of current physical simulators by providing a complete virtual testing environment that students can use anywhere to learn critical audiology skills. SmartVS is a simulator software package used to train audiology students. Unlike the previous simulators, which have a physical embodiment, SmartVS is a completely virtual approach. Simulators are quickly becoming an important component in teaching, training, and evaluating performance in many fields, including medicine. And audiology is no exception. We have developed a comprehensive tool that allows audiology students of various levels to learn and practice important skills and concepts in a safe environment where they can make mistakes without putting patients at risk. More often, students are limited to testing each other to acquire critical clinical skills. This approach limits their exposure to a very small subset of generally young cooperative student subjects with mostly normal hearing. It can also be very time consuming as students must reciprocate and also be subjects themselves for other classmates. SmartVS allows audiology programs to deliver a standardized training experience to students by providing a comprehensive set of clinical examples. The virtual simulator provides a realistic clinical environment where students must learn to use various instruments and connect transducers on patients to acquire and interpret results, generate reports, and billing. The SmartVS program works on multiple levels. It can be used with undergraduates in an Introduction to Audiology course, or with graduate students in either Basic Audiometry, Otoacoustic Emissions, or Advanced EP courses. It can also be used in conjunction with other task trainers to allow the student a full experience of testing the patient and then looking at treatment of fitting them with hearing aids by using a task trainer to fit the hearing aid and for verification of the hearing aid. These cases were also designed to be evaluated in either a basic scenario, such as used in, with an undergraduate, or by graduate students to evaluate the case by looking at the case history and see what other tests might need to be conducted or whether other recommendations made given the information that they find in their case history. Simulation has been used in the training of medical professionals for a number of decades and is now starting to be used in audiology education. As shown in this flowchart, students can learn new knowledge and can then practice new skills and procedures. The use of this technique allows the learner to practice and make mistakes in a safe environment without concern for patient comfort or risk. The learner can practice repeatedly, and the mannequin or computer will not complain about doing it over and over again. Simulation allows the learner to self-evaluate or to receive feedback from an instructor on every part of the procedure. Each step of the task can be contemplated during and at the end of the simulated learning experience and then be provided with guidance for improvement. The SmartVS program is organized in a typical workflow order, starting with appointments, entering demographic information into the system database for new patients, reviewing the patient history, preparing the patient in the testing room, performing the evaluation, and generating a report and billing. SmartVS uses actual user interfaces from clinical devices to provide students with a complete learning experience. The recording time for the various responses are also managed to provide students with a realistic expectation of actual testing times. They can then apply the skills and knowledge to operate the actual devices during other labs. Finally, the briefing questions are also provided to highlight specific learning concepts. Each patient has a unique face and name in order to make them feel like real individuals that the students can get to know. For each profile, otoscopic images, tympanometry, acoustic reflex results, hearing thresholds for air, bone, auditory vocal potentials, and autoacoustic emissions are provided. In addition, a comprehensive ideological medical history is also provided. The testing room allows access to the patient. By placing the otoscope to the patient's ear and pressing the mouse button, you can see inside their ear. 
Similarly, putting the tympanometer to the ear will generate a tympanogram or acoustic reflex measure. The audiometer module allows students to perform behavioral and speech audiometry testing using the smart audiometer interface. By clicking on the audiogram screen, you can select the frequencies and intensities to test. Doing a right mouse click outputs a stimulus. A response indicator shows if the patient has responded or not. Speech testing incorporates commonly occurring foils for each word. In this example, the word is shout, and the patient responds bout. The OAE module allows students to perform both transient and distortion product OAE recordings. First, the student must place the OAE probe in the patient's ear. Both click and tone TEOAEs can be recorded. The recorded OAEs are digitally filtered to reflect the patient's hearing configuration. If the OAE probe is removed from the ear, the real-time meattle response will change to reflect the probe position, and the system will provide a warning if a test is attempted. Similarly, DPOAEs can also be recorded and displayed on the screen. The transducer and electrode placement help panel provides feedback to the student while learning how to place electrodes and transducers. The panel may be displayed or hidden from each profile to allow for training and evaluation. The automatically set up button will show new students quickly how to set up the electrodes and transducers. Incorrect placement of the positive and negative electrodes results in an inverted ABR and incorrectly labeled peaks. The student can also learn how to resolve this problem by simply inverting the recording and software. If a transducer is placed in the wrong ear, a common error, the corresponding recorded data will originate from the ear where the transducer is placed. Using SmartEP, students can learn how to record data using clicks or specific tones. Parametric data from the literature have been used to generate functions to model the effects of various recording parameters on ABR morphology. The effect of intensity and frequency on ABR latency are represented by this response delay surface. Other parameters such as stimulation rate, stimulation rise time, and others have also been incorporated into the ABR generation model. They can see the effects of various high-pass filter settings, low-pass filter settings, the effect of line noise and the notch filter. The student will learn to interpret results based on acquisition parameters and recording conditions. In this example, the ambient acoustical noise has affected the amplitude of the responses. Although the dial setting was set to 80 dB NHL, the resulting response corresponds to a much lower stimulation intensity. Students will learn about interaural attenuation and the importance of masking in cases of unilateral hearing loss. In this example, the virtual patient has a threshold of 80 dB NHL in the left ear and normal hearing in the right ear. The resulting recordings with and without masking are shown, indicating that without masking, the left ear shows a robust response. After masking is enabled, the response in the left ear disappears. Complete reports can be generated within SmartEP with the following features. Display AEP waveforms and other information such as latency intensity graphs and tabular data on a multi-page format. Add report text and comments. Add images including patient picture, audiogram, tympanometry, and otoscopy images. A PDF report can be submitted by the student for grading. This is an example of a report page containing various images, a latency intensity graph, and raw ABR data. Billing is an important component of any clinical practice. The student may generate a billing sheet showing all the tests that were ran on that particular virtual patient and the amount to bill. A debrief is a required part of any simulation experience. SmartVS includes a debrief section with questions to guide the learner through a self-reflection about the case, the actions they took, and any suggestions they would have for doing this case differently the next time. For more information, visit the SmartVS webpage. Thank you.